So today we have Jessica Sonntag from Texas A&M College of Dentistry. Jessica, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. If you can, please give us a brief, uh, I guess, summary of your dental school journey. So where you're from, where you mm -hmm. went to undergrad, okay. what you uh, major in, and did you or did you not take a year off? Okay, so I'm from Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and so we do not have a dental school. And so I had to go out of state for school. But so I went to the University of Arkansas for my undergrad. Mm -hmm. And I majored in biology. And then um, straight from there, I applied. And luckily, I did not have to take a year off, which is really great. Right, right. Um, but I definitely put a lot of hard work in in my undergrad, you know, just to try and give myself that best option, you know, to I didn't really have another plan. You know, obviously if I had to take that year off, I would have, um, but going into it, I was really hoping for that first year. Awesome, awesome. And so uh, for people who do not know, you know, Texas schools are extremely, extremely competitive to get into. Uh, so the fact that you're from Arkansas and you, you, you grabbed one of the select spots uh, of these uh, uh, Texas dental schools is huge. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand how difficult that actually is to do. And so with that being said, I know you had to have done extremely, extremely well on your DAT. Um, so <laughs> if you can, uh, please kind of give us your like number one tip or your number one resource in order for people to be successful on the DAT. Okay. So fun fact, I actually had to take it twice. Okay. That's cool. Um, but that was actually, um, it actually ended up kind of working in my favor. I did way better the second time. Um, so that kind of worked um, so I could use that as like a talking point mm -hmm. in my interview. And that was kind of something that helped me stick out in a way, even though ideally most people would tell you not to try and take it twice. Right. Um, but so my number one tip is to study what works best for you mm -hmm. um, and not kind of what other people tell you to do. So the first time I took it, I studied, you know, through the summer um, cause that's what everyone told me to do study through the summer, take it. So you can focus totally on that. Um, but knowing myself, I do best when I'm busy, mm -hmm. like I'm most like proficient in my studying when I have other stuff to do, when I'm scheduling myself, not in the summer when I wasn't in classes and I didn't have stuff to do. So I would like, you know, study for a couple hours. I'm like, man, that was good. <laughs> I don't need to do anymore. Yeah, um, sure. But that, you know, you need to study more than that. And I just didn't. And then the other thing was that everybody told me just to do straight practice tests. They're like, do as many practice tests as you can. That's what will help you. Um, for me, that was not ideal because I, when I was doing the practice test, I was just kind of memorizing those questions and I wasn't actually reviewing the material that I had learned. So for me, the like a problem-based study set was better. And so the first time I did like some study thing, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was mostly just practice tests and you just go through and take them. And then the second time I did DAT boot camp, mm -hmm. which they also have the um, tests you can use, but they also have just like problems that you can work through. And so that was way better for me. And then when I took the second time, I took it like at the end of May. And so I studied through like spring semester. Mm -hmm. And that was just better for me. I just worked it in like it was another class that I had to take seriously. And um, it definitely showed in my score for sure. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And so you're currently a D1 or you're a D2? A D2. I'm a D2, D2 now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so, out of here. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, okay. So how, especially because you're in Arkansas, how did you kind of like show interest in the school? I mean, like, does your school have any type of pre-dental programs for students who are trying to say like, hey, this is my face, I want you all to know me? Is there anything like that for pre-dental students? Yeah, so we have a pre-dental club. And so they would set up to have like different admissions come in and give us like a presentation. Um, and you know, every school has their different vibe. Um, yeah. I would say Texas a and was pretty intense, you know? So you would like go and introduce yourself, but um, you know, you could tell that they have their high standards set. Yeah. And so it was kind of intimidating for sure. And I remember, I think I called and like, you know, some schools, they wanted you to come like, you know, set up a tour, like get to know, come for like some like pre-dental days and stuff. And so I had called A&M to see, you know, if they had anything like that. And they were like, no, sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, right, right. Um, so, but other than that, they, you know, you get to know the admissions kind of like through the school 
Um, and then we have our pre-dental committee who writes your rec letters and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And so what about the interview? You know, I think that a lot of people get very, very nervous about the interview, yeah. the actual day. So can you kind of walk us through what your interview was like? Yes. Yeah, so a and interview day is actually pretty relaxed um, compared to some other schools that I interviewed at for sure. Um, so you come in and um, it's just kind of like a half day. And so the first thing you do is you have your set of interviews. And so you have three rounds and they're only for 15 minutes each. So they're not too long. You know, you don't like feel like you're like stuck there and have to talk for too long. Like anybody can talk for 15 minutes. And so it's kind of nice. You get to meet three different people and it's just a one-on-one. So it's not like you're being like ganged up on or like balancing two different personalities. Um, So that's the first set. You just do those three. And then they have like, you know, the financial people come in and the research program come and do those presentations. And then after that, um, the dental students come and they give you the tour of the school, which is nice, you know, to have like that student inside Mm -hmm. and you eat lunch with them and then you just kind of wrap it up and, that's it after that but I felt like the day was very inclusive very relaxed like not um not near as intimidating as I felt when I was in pre-dental so okay awesome and so you you quickly mentioned that you did have other interviews and so like what kind of made you uh choose Texas A&M like as your final choice like what was that like thing was it your interview the interview process was the people like what kind of made you say this is where I want to be Um, part of it was definitely the interview. I felt like they made it feel very inclusive. Like, you know, like they wanted me to be there. Like I would, you know, fit in and they weren't like trying to like scare me out of anything, um, which was nice. And then I felt like they also had a really good balance of the, you know, hard curriculum and the clinic compared to like some schools are kind of focusing one or the other, but they kind of had a good balance. Um, so that was kind of how I ended up making my decision. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so how was your first year? I mean, granted, you're done with it now, but yeah. Um, as far as that didactics, like how was that yeah. whole process? How was, uh, did you have any clinical exposure? Were you able to hold a drill? Like how was your first year in general? Yeah. So our first year is pretty intense. Um, so it's, they're changing it now. So our curriculum actually changed on the last class on the old curriculum um, because they're, you know, modifying it to fit with the new boards. But so traditionally you take the first part of the NDBE boards at the end of your, yeah, whatever the, (laughs) um, at the end of our first year. So I already took my boards um, this last summer Mm -hmm. at the end of D1. And so with that first year, I mean, they really pile everything in there to make sure that you're ready for boards and are covering all those classes um so it's really heavy didactic but they do like have in the lab so i mean we did operative so we were drilling and mounting casts waxing you know dental anatomy all that stuff was in there too first year was hard it was really hard second year has definitely been a nice breath of fresh air for sure Okay, okay. And that's kind of different. I mean, because at least our school and a couple of other schools, uh, D2 is like the worst one because that's yeah. when you start putting in the clinical classes and you still have like the same amount of normal didactic classes also. So like right. D2 year was horrible for us. Really? Like, oh yeah, it was bad. I've heard that though, like at a lot of schools, like everyone's like, you know, second years, you know, the hardest one of the students, that's when they get depressed. I mean, for us, it's D1. Like you okay. see D1s in the hallway and you're like, I'm sorry. I hope you're doing okay. Right, 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 right. You know, it's terrible. Everybody makes it through, right? Yeah. Everybody no, makes it through. I mean, that's the nice thing. I mean, you have your class. I mean, you have, I don't know, how big is your, y'all's class? <laughs> we have like, after we add on the IS students, it's like, 235. What? <laughs> yeah. What's the yeah. IS students? So the IS students, like the international students, they come in okay. uh, our second year. Oh. Uh, so we start off with like 205. Oh my gosh. So we have a lot of students. I mean, you that's what people, that's good though. I mean, <laughs> how big is your class? Um, we have like 105, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's still pretty big. But basically, you know, you have 100 or even 200 people with you doing the same thing, going through the same stuff. And so that's just, like, comforting, you know, that it's not, you're not doing it alone. Like, you're exactly. not the only one not sleeping and tired and studying when you don't want to anymore, so. And so how is your class dynamic? Because even you saying that, you know, uh, you having somebody to almost, like, relate to is huge. 
And yeah. I, I always tell people that that's like a, that should be a huge factor within your dental school uh, selection process, uh, yeah. you know, making sure that it's almost like a family type of vibe. Like how is it uh, yeah. at your school? So our school is very, um, or at least my class, I feel like that's like the kind of one thing is like, it's definitely class dependent. And that was the feel that I got as I interviewed at different schools too. You know, like some students I talked to, they'd be like, oh yeah, I love my class. And then another student I talked to, they'd be like, our class is cutthroat, yeah, like, yeah. not sharing anything. So my class is super good about that. And the class above me is really nice about it. Like sending old notes, like, you know, like, anything you can remember like you know focus on this stuff when you're studying and classes like this like pay attention to like these case studies you know I like to ask on this and so our class is really good about that we have like you know obviously our group me and like a Facebook page where we share all of our resources and like if anybody makes good like study guides and that kind of stuff so it's huge definitely lucked out but I mean it helps a lot you know to have people helping you and that was a, one of the biggest surprises mm -hmm for me going in was just how helpful people were. Mm -hmm. So like, I remember, do y'all still, still do cadavers? Yeah, uh, yes. They changed our lab up a little bit. Um, yeah. But when I was doing uh, anatomy lab, yeah, we had cadavers. Yeah, okay. So like, I remember studying in gross, like before we would have our practicals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like looking at it and I'm like, man, I do not know what I'm looking at. Like, I cannot find this. And I was just kind of like talking aloud. Or, like I'd ask one person, they'd be like, oh, this body over here has a really good one. Like. Yeah stop whatever they are doing to help me. And I was just like, wow, like that is so nice. Right, right. Yeah. It feels good to know you have that support system. Yeah. For sure, for sure. But okay, awesome, awesome. And so I'm asking everybody this question. What makes Texas A&M unique? Hmm. <laughs> There's definitely a few things for okay. sure. Um, I feel like going in, I thought it was unique because it had – like, you know, it has all the specialties and like has a pretty well-known reputation, that kind of stuff. But now that I'm here, I feel like what's unique about it is that they focus on the basics a lot more than other schools do. Um, so like they really want you to be exposed to everything, no matter how, uh, not, I don't want to say outdated, but like less common it is to use anymore, you know? So I mean like, and, like Right. So, I mean, we're doing amalgam, we're wire bending in ortho. We've, I've casted a million gold things. Wow. Yeah. And so like, I know other schools that don't even do casting at all. Yeah. We don't, know? we don't do casting. Yeah. Y'all don't do casting. Yeah. I mean, I've literally torch holding the torch. You know? spins, right? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So, I mean, we still do all that, which I mean, no, we won't be doing that that much, but like if there was ever a time where you need to do that, I mean, it's, I guess it's good that they hit those basics. So you've at least been exposed. You've at least know how to do it, that kind of stuff. But I mean, we're also doing CAD cam, you know, we're going to take like an Invisalign course and do all that stuff. So I feel like you get both ends of the spectrum, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. And uh, the last question of the interview, if you were able to go back in time and talk to your younger self while you were going through the application process. What's mm -hmm. one piece of advice that you would tell yourself? So my biggest advice would be that the December 1st date does not have to be your date. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize to what extent that was when ed like admissions and stuff was going out. Um, and so that was like the biggest surprise. And I honestly didn't even know until I interviewed at A&M and mm -hmm. they were like, oh yeah, like, you know, you might not hear from us on December 1st. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was literally the first time anybody had even told me like whatever. And so that was like the biggest surprise is that admissions will continue to come. I mean, I think I even got another interview offered like in the middle of December. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I ended up, I didn't take it, but still I just didn't know, like, you know, everyone always says December 1st is your day. That's when you're going to find out all the schools you get into and then you're going to choose. And it's not like that at all. I don't even think I ended up making my decision until like February. I ended up like holding my spot, you know, which apparently you can do that. I didn't know that either. Right, right, right your spot out of school and then wait and so I mean I ended up doing that which worked out you know in my favor and I don't think I ended up choosing till like February but that was like my biggest thing was December was like so stressful and 
looking back, like there's no reason that shouldn't, should have been that way, you know, cause it's like you hear from one school, but you're still waiting to hear from another school. So it's like, what do you do? You know? Yeah. You're like losing sleep over nothing. Yeah. <laughs> some schools they give you like a deadline um they're like you have to respond by december 15th yeah another one's like by december 30th but then you still haven't heard from two of the other schools that you interviewed at and you're like well what am i supposed to yeah or decide now and so that was just stressful but so i would just say you can hold your spot at schools it's not a bad thing to do because like i felt kind of guilty about it too because i'm like i don't want to be holding somebody's spot yeah. if i don't know um, but I mean, there's so much time from December until admissions and they'll, you know, shuffle through all the classes. Amazing. So don't feel bad about it. Take your time. Don't be stressed out. Relax. <laughs> Relax. It out. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Jessica, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if any of our viewers have any questions, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, probably best way is either through my Instagram. You can DM me. My name is at Jess, J-E-S, and then my last name, Sonnentag. Um, and then, or you can email me and it's jessicasonnentag at gmail.com. Awesome. And of course, I'll put those links in the description box below. Uh, yeah. But once again, Jessica, you know, from the future DDS family, we really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we just want to say thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me. Of course, of course. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you have any questions for us over here at Future DDS, you can always shoot us a DM uh, on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, but other than that, see y'all next time.